What's up, y'all? Thank you so much for checking out this video here on Show Style and Spirit. I am Ebony, of course. As you can see from the title of this video, we will be talking about a video that Selena from Bell Collective and the hit show Bring It. I love Bring It so much. She actually dropped a video tonight on her channel where she is talking about her tumultuous relationship, former marriage with JJ, the current husband to So Gucci, who stars on Bell Collective. There's a lot that I wanna talk about with this video that she made tonight. Um, I, it just really made me um, want to open up my heart to you all just about my hesitation with dating today. And it's it, it really just triggered me. So I want to get into it all. Now, before we get into these sound bites, I ask that you please hit the like button on this video. Hitting the like button or the dislike button will cause YouTube to recommend this video to more people who love discussing about um, dating and relationships and just really the serious side to it all. We don't always want to romanticize dating and marriage and just talking about it in a very floral sense. We want to be very real about it and how sometimes it can get dark. And dark is a word that Selena used to describe her ex-husband baby. So um, also, if you have not already done so, please subscribe to Show Style and Spirit. I would love to have you where we do converse about various life issues. So um, go ahead and Let's just get ready and kick back because we have a lot to listen to and unplug. So now the Fair Use Act, the Copyright Act of 1976 says that my fair use commentary of these sound bites are allowed. So first I want to get into the explosive allegations of what um, Selena says about her ex-husband, JJ. And, and my commentary on this is certainly my opinion and it is alleged. So I just want to give that general overview as an intro and then I'll come back with my commentary. So many times for cheating, for physical abuse, from verbal abuse, from mental abuse, from him being a compulsive liar, from him being a serial cheater, for him, from him being so controlling, I just couldn't go back. I didn't even know JJ them had got cast. Latrice called me. I was her first pick. Latrice called me, but at that time, I hadn't told anybody about my fiance. I hadn't told anybody I'm dating. I haven't told anybody anything because y'all see on season two, that's when my ex and his wife came. On season three is when y'all found out about my fiance. So, plus it was still a little too fresh for me because I was still thinking about my son all the time. I didn't want to be trying to film if they would have chosen me. I didn't want to put them through that at that time. But also, Latrice called me back, and she was like, I was thinking about JJ. Now, I'm still giving this man props. After you done dragged me here in Mississippi for so many years, and you done lied on me for so many years, and after you done abused, abused me for so many years, after you done cheated on me for so many years, I you done get all of that. I still spoke highly of you to her. Say, yeah, he'll be good for TV. Girl, his personality, the same thing I tell other people when they ask me about my ex. I say, oh, yeah, he'll be good for TV. You know, his personality, he got big personality and this and that. I say, yeah, that'll be uh, great. She was like, because the girls can come, his wife. I say, yeah. So I'm vouching for y'all. But if I would have known that y'all was going to use this platform to dog the sh to dog the hell out of me, to slander my name, to make up lies, to have this smear campaign and y'all team up against me. 
I'm going to sit up here and talk good about these people. Patrice called me again. <clears throat> this is after all of this stuff done happened. I and we're going to get back into, we're going to pick up where she leaves off, where she talks about Latrice calling her back later. So, so initially Latrice called her to say, oh yeah, they're going to bring on So Gucci and JJ, obviously for the beginning of season two. Then after Latrice starts working with them on the show, then she's going to call Selena back and have uh, another conversation with her. But I wanted to talk about her talking about, um, him cheating and abusing her allegedly when they were married. Now she said, you, you have to watch this video. It's really compelling. Selena says that JJ is like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. She used those words to describe him. And if you've ever read the book, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, multiple personalities, baby. And one is just monstrous. Okay, so she said that we all see the fun side of JJ, the gosh darn it, the gosh darn it, coming off very lighthearted and happy, happy go lucky, you know, but then she said that there is a dark side to him. And that's what just makes me like not want to date. I feel like it is so unsafe for women to date because it's not like you can just look at a person and know if they are abusive, if they struggle with addiction, if they are bad with money, if they are a scammer, if they are a criminal. You cannot just look at them. The comedian Samore, she told this joke saying about how she wished that when we met a man, um, you, you know how when you see these medication commercials, then you hear the narrator start talking about the side effects. Samore said that she wishes that when we meet a man, we certainly hear, we suddenly hear this voice that says he has bad credit and tends to um, lie and he, he'll beat a woman's ass. You know, she starts naming like all these different bad things that the guy does, kind of like those medication commercials. So um, I get a lot of anxiety, like when I'm not making content for y'all, when I'm not watching um, reality TV or binge watching um, old t classic TV shows or watching movies on Netflix, I watch a lot of true crime. I watch, you know, Snapped. I look at For Your Man, Fatal Attraction. I look at Dateline. I look at who the bleep did I marry? You know, all sorts of the true crime, the dating stuff, the 2020 episodes. And I probably should not watch those true crime shows because they just make me not want to date. And I just feel like in order to remain alive, healthy, and safe, let me just enjoy myself. Let me just text my classmates, you know, check on them, see how they're doing. Maybe sometimes we can all meet up for a drink or something or jump on Zoom and talk and laugh or something. But let me like take myself out, you know, because I just I don't want to be in a position where I'm being abused. And I for damn sure ain't going to let nobody come in and, you know, fuck up my house, fuck up my credit you know, anything of that nature. Definitely, you, you're not getting any savings. I'm not helping you pay for kids that I didn't make. So I just, I, I'm just at a place where I don't see any benefits of trying to date or spend space with someone, spend space and time with someone on a romantic level. I feel like people could subtract from you more than they can add to you. And when I was listening to Selena watching this video, those were my thoughts where it's like confirmation that me just enjoying my life as a single woman is um, the best path for me. Now, she actually talks more about JJ's controlling nature. So I want to play this next soundbite and then come back with my commentary. Call me and she was like, Selena, why you didn't tell me how they were? My response was, I was going to let you find out on your own. I didn't want to say anything negative about them because even though this man um, did all of these things to me, I still look 
at him and be like, they're still the father of my kids. But I'm a true believer of everything happens for a reason. If he would have never got on this show, I wouldn't be sitting here. I would have never spoken my piece. I still would have allowed this man to drag me in the streets of Jackson, Mississippi. The people here in the streets of Jackson, Mississippi still believe the lies this man been telling for, the, for, for all of these years. This man is still carrying on his same lie. That's what narcissists do. When you have those narcissistic traits and you don't let this person, that's not good. It's like they would never get over it. You would never win. That's why I never tried to go against this man publicly after this. Trust me, he, he coming for me. He coming for me. Because he think I'm going against him when I'm really standing up for myself. And I'm telling the truth. I have the paper over here of, like, the day we're supposed to go to court. I'm not going to lie. I can't even remember if we went to court or not. Because I used to let this man control my mind. I used to let him get in my head. I let him do that for so long. I have this book. Not a book, but a bag. With all of my girls, everything my girls gave me from Mother's Day, Valentine's, I got Easter, Thanksgiving, all of that. And I used to just put everything in that bag. And when I left them, it was still in the bag. I never looked back into the bag until all of this started happening. That's when I found the letter that I wrote his mom after I left him. So she can understand why. Because I know if she's listening to his side, it's going to be in his favor. Just like now, everything is in his favor. JJ gives himself extra, 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 extra credit. And over here, I get zero. He acted like the kids were never here. When they was going to school in Clinton, I would pick them kids up from the bus stop. They would come to my house. We would do homework. I would cook. Do, do everything a mom is supposed to do. Sometimes they would take a bath here, and I would go ahead and drop them off that night. All I had to do was go in the house with JJ and go to bed. Everything was already done. Sometimes they would stay the night. Okay, so that is a very important soundbite that I want to get into because even going back to Bring It, JJ always painted the picture like he had the daughters, the girls, Sun J, Star, and Sky, um, at least half the time, if not the majority of the time and he did all of their he took care of all of their daily needs feeding clothing um combing their hair then on bell collective we learned oh now so gucci was assisting him with taking care of the girls he's always painted the picture like selena was too busy or occupied with herself to want to spend time with her kids so in this video She's going to have like a lot of paper from when the girls were little and they would make her cards for Mother's Day, um, her birthday, Christmas, whatever. They would make her cards and that bag that she described, she has, she's going to have the bag like sitting in front of her, obviously. And she's going to be pulling out all these paper cards that the girls wrote when they were kids. The point that she's making, and then she even described when she and JJ were separated, she would pick the kids up from school, bring them home, make sure that they got their homework done. She would feed them, bathe them. So when they went over to their dads, all they had to do was get in the bed. So she's making the point that she definitely took care of her kids' needs on a daily basis, but he wants to paint the picture that she did not. She even talks about J.J. controlling her mind and trying to control their daughter's minds. She says that he tries to say repeatedly over the years, I took care of you. I took care of you. Your mom did not. Your mom did not. Allegedly and according to what Selena said, and I'm paraphrasing. So she said that through in this video, she says that luckily the daughters, they have memories and they remember life as it truly happened. And they know that their mom helped to, to raise them and take care of them. And it wasn't just their dad and so Gucci. 
Now, what another thing that she says in this video that I thought was wild, she said that when they were married, he would not allow her to have a cell phone. He even said, well, you know what? Neither one of us will have cell phones. And then she later learned that he secretly had a cell phone that he kept hidden in his car. So that is nuts. He did not want her to have a cell phone so that she could not text anyone. Um, you know, that's one less device that she could use to try and reach anyone if she needed help. He sounds like he was deeply insecure that perhaps she would meet someone else. So he figures if I keep her from having a cell phone, then, you know, she will not be able to meet other people or they send her pictures or vice versa. If she doesn't have a cell phone, she can't download a dating app or anything. You know, no telling what he was thinking in that in that insecure mind of his, in my opinion. Now, this next soundbite that I want to get into is about D, so Gucci's daughter. Now, um, I want to play this soundbite first. You all know I like to give a very general intro into a soundbite. And then I'm going to expound upon what Selena says, because we have heard bits and pieces of this before. So I'm going to play this soundbite now. So I know if this lady hates me, I feel like she would probably take it out on my kids. So it was very important to me to keep peace because I know my children would be around her when they're with their father. So I was like, get your mom's attention. I'm waving. She looked up at me and looked right there down. I, right then I said, oh, I ain't speaking to her ass no more. I'm done. So the kids, like I said, was with me, was with me. They called their father. Now here this come. Instead of fixing the problem, oh, I'm trying to turn the kids against her. I have not done anything to this lady. She was the one being rude to me. So how am I trying to turn the kids against her and the kids are with me and the kids are seeing this? They're right here with me at the mall. But I get blamed. I get blamed for everything. Say I try to corrupt the kids' minds. That's what you do. Sometimes I be talking directly to him. Because I know he's going to look at the video. And she is the one who did something out the norm. She's never came into my personal space. She could have just waved at him and kept it going. But no, this lady came over here in my space intentionally. She came over here intentionally. I'm not lying. She's never done that. I've always went into her space to speak, to keep the peace. Always. And if her daughter's with her, I'm going to give her daughter a hug. I'm going to compliment her, her hair, her outfit. Whatever I think is cute, I'm going to do that. And that's not even my stepchild. But I've been doing it for years. That's why when she did her live, she was like, yes, Selena's nice. She's never done anything to me or nothing like that. I'm surprised she didn't deny saying that she wanted me to be her mom. She wished I was her mom. I'm surprised she didn't, didn't deny that. And I, I appreciate that. Even though she still tried to make up an excuse. We were young. She will let us do whatever. And we can go over there. Y'all were kids. Of course. Have fun. Do what you're supposed to do over here. I want you to have fun. It's not like they was into no boys. They were kids. <laughs> But anyway, I don't care what excuse she, she came up with. She did not deny telling me that. And she I'm not the only person she told that to. But we already know why. Because her mother neglected her. And let's get that straight. She did not neglect her babies for mine. Her own words, she neglected them trying to get a man. Now, you know, if you're dating somebody... And they have kids. Yeah, you're going to do whatever you can to impress them. Anything. You're going to comb here. You're going to fix plates. You're going to do this. Some of them probably take your kids shopping. They're going to do whatever they can to impress this man over here. And that's what she did. 
Pam did not call her over there. She just raved. Which okay, so in that sound bite, she's kind of like going through her thoughts. <coughs> Excuse me. Speaking on D, so Gucci's daughter, then her mind kind of takes her to the fight. And then she focuses back on D. So I want to say we've seen on Bell Collective a scene between D and Soguchi where D said, you know, there was a point where me and my sibling felt like, you know, you were like neglecting us. And D sometimes will go live on her Instagram after a Bell Collective episode to kind of give like her commentary on it. I'm guessing that So Gucci has asked her not to do any more IG lives after the cameras. They didn't edit out the scene where D said, you know, yeah, my sibling and I did kind of feel like there was a point in our lives where you neglected us. And so I think So Gucci told her not to talk any more about the episodes. And so Selena here is saying that, you know, D has always enjoyed me. <clears throat> When all the girls were young, I would have D over as well, and they would have fun. In this video, she also says that, you know, um, her daughters are not colorist. She said they got a lot of flack over what D said during season two. She said them not wanting to use the soap in the house that everyone was using. It didn't have anything to do with D being brown skin or any brown skin people. And she said, you know, my, my daughters are not like that. They are not colorist. So I thought that that was interesting that Selena would say, you know, yes, I have a very positive um, experience with D. So Gucci's daughter. And I'm glad that, you know, she has never even tried to deny enjoying me as well. And I do think that that is significant because, you know, she said that so Gucci has neglected her daughter to try and get a man. And as far as her helping him with doing the kid's hair, she's like, you know, if you're dating someone with kids, you're trying to prove to them that you would love their kids and you would help them with them. So you are helping to comb, you know, JJ's daughter's hair. And I think that Selena does have a point. Now, um, I want to get into this next soundbite because she does talk about um, the fight between she and So Gucci at Latrice's event. And then I will come back with my commentary. JJ missed our grandson's birthday. You wanted a boy so bad, you got this your first blood grandchild. You did not come to his birthday party on his birthday because of all of this that's going on. I don't care what we have going on. I was not about to miss my grandson's birthday party. There's just no way. But how are you going to file charges on me when you ran up on me? When she said, let's keep it that way, I was done. I was going to turn right back around and start talking to Tim. She's talking about, oh, she was still getting loud. I didn't say a word. I'm like, okay. But then she brought her ass back in my space once again to try to insult me, to try to embarrass me, I guess to try to humiliate me. That's when I started running off at the mouth. Cause baby, you don't let this show get to your head this quick and you really ain't making no noise. No noise. The only reason you're being talked about now is because of me. Because your name is in the same sentence as mine. All of your interviews are about me. All of them. Who was interviewing you before this incident? Back to back. So like I said, this lady done dropped her purse. You done took off your shades. You done pushed them by the arm out the way. And then you charge at me. I'm still in my same spot. I still got my purse right here. I still got my champagne in my glass. I have not moved. You charged at me like a bull that I'm seen red. So 
Who's not going to have a natural reaction to defend themselves? For the people talking about, oh, I would have pressed charges too. You don't hit nobody. Baby, anybody run up on me, a person I know hates my guts, still don't know the reason why. The only thing I can think of is you and your husband be pillow talking. And he done told you all of these lies about me, and you believe him. Because he can always try to make himself look good. Always. <clears throat> okay, now. You all, if you watched a video that I made about the part three of the reunion for Bell Collective, when uh, her daughters were on the reunion part three, then you know that my opinion is secretly deep down, Carlos did not appreciate so Gucci pressing charges against Selena, ensuring that Selena could not attend the reunion because I think from a production and creative standpoint, I think Carlos was looking at So Gucci like, you don't run my reunion. You don't say who's coming up in here and who's not. I think he kind of felt like her pressing charges was a power move for her to control, control the environment, control the conversation that would happen at the season three reunion. So what did Carlos do? He let Selena's daughters come on the reunion and speak for her. And he interviewed Selena on his podcast. And they dug up audio on So Gucci saying, I'm about to throw a drink on this bitch. You know, he said, we, we did our research and we found the audio. And then he played the clip. So in this video, Selena is saying, you know, someone who hates my guts she is like running up on me. And then she said, you know, once she called her an extra, you know, and was disrespectful, tried to embarrass me. That's when I got to running off at the mouth. Now, is violence okay? Of, of course not. Um, are we human and we have human reactions to things? Yes, we do. Do we make mistakes? Yes, we do. So I'm not going to write off Selena or judge her for being mad that this woman called her an extra and purposely walked over to Selena and Tamra and just said hi to Tamra and then, you know, called Selena the extra. So I felt like she was provoking Selena. Selena did fall for the bait, unfortunately. But um, I just wanted to get her input on the fight because, again, she could not attend the reunion because so Gucci pressed charges. Now, there is another sound bite that I want to get into, y'all. And this is another allegation that um, Selena makes on JJ. So general intro, and then I will come back with my commentary. I don't care that y'all got married. <laughs> I left him for a reason. You have a man that I no longer wanted. You have a man that begged me to come back to him. You have a man that went on national TV and said he waited and sat there and waited for me for three years. You have a man that was calling my mama every other day, begging her to beg me to come back to him. And you still asking him if he's in love with me. Now, see, it's a lot of stuff I can say about that. He gonna deny it. Then she'll be some out. Oh, yeah, she's trying to mess up my marriage now. Because, baby, if I tell that, I am allegedly, allegedly by a whole lot of people, because you keep my name in your mouth. You keep my name in your mouth. What father would tell a daughter's boyfriend how to not get caught cheating? So you won't who they're dating to cheat on them you teaching them you telling them how to not get caught cheating i got the answer you see it and go out the country go out the country and i also heard allegedly by several people that one of the females he was seeing in brazil that's what she looked like me. They was like, Swing, she can be your twin. Y'all built the light. Y'all look alike. I thought it was you. I said, baby, I ain't been to no Brazil. But everybody got a twin. <laughs> okay. So, in that sound bite, so good, or Selena accuses JJ of telling Star's boyfriend that you cheat by going out of the country to cheat. 
And then she accuses JJ of allegedly cheating on Soguchi with a woman in Brazil. And she said that other people took that to her. But um, I thought that this video, if anything, the greatest takeaway was her speaking on him being so controlling. And she said he used to control her mind. She said that he would get inside her head. And I think that that is very profound. That is something that we don't talk about enough when we discuss dating and relationships and marriage. Nobody talks about the psychological effects. You may hear about someone cheating. You may hear about physical abuse. You may even hear about them totally destroying the finances and then they have to start all over financially. But you don't hear about that psychological control, that mind control, you know, and that is what is super scary because once they can control your mind, they can control your self-esteem and they're controlling your body and then they're controlling your money, isolating you from your friends and your family who uh, care about you and respect you once. And then they start isolating you from people and then it just goes on downhill from there. So I thought that this was a very important video. You know, I wonder will Carlos go ahead and just cast Selena for season four? I feel like that will just drive so Gucci nuts, but it's pretty much a no brainer. Um, Selena and her daughters already have a fan base from bringing on from being on Bring It. And in my opinion, um, Selena is just like a natural star for reality TV. Um, very likable, very talkative. I know that she would totally crush her confessionals. She would be awesome at that. The camera loves her. She's beautiful. And so I just think like if I was casting for a reality TV show, if I was casting for Bell Collective, I would totally book her. And I wouldn't just make a drastic decision on not booking her just because her ex-husband's new wife would have her panties in a bunch over it. But um, you all let me know in the comments, what do you all think about um, her experience with JJ in their marriage and the things that she was saying. And what are your experiences with dating? And have you ever, unfortunately, crossed paths with a narcissist? How did you get that breakthrough that they were into being manipulate, manipulative and controlling? How did you break free? Um, I'm glad that you are safe and that you are doing okay. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate the support. Please hit the like button on this video and please subscribe to Show Style and Spirit. And I will talk with you all soon. Bye.